but the department... Tell me about it. Oh. The Talk about it, Linda. Okay. The department in the 60s was one of the most dynamic departments. We had a lot of visiting instructors. Uh, but there was so much energy, so much going on, that I see all coming back now. I see that energy. And it was a social awareness of what was going on in the war, in Vietnam. But many painters... I'm kind of sorry I missed out on that because I didn't get there until... In the uh, art department until 74. Right, right. And in the 60s, um, we were faced with the war. I mean, uh, Don, they were waiting for him when he was graduating. Um, uh, Jim Crawford also. Everybody up there, you know, was worried about getting into the, you know, being, being drafted. Um, I was in high school then, and I remember some of my peers yeah, are. You would hear about were, it. Were but afraid. you know, I found with my paintings as I worked up there in the graduate studio, my paintings were a relief from my political activism, because the other side of me that my professors did know, you know, I was part of the Social Labor Party. I was doing the marching. I was working in the civil rights. I was working in the anti-war movement over at Madison, Wisconsin. But your work, your painting work, didn't reflect that. My work was, no, my work was about life energy. My work was about hope, which it still is. And my work didn't reflect those images. Uh, Donald Mendelssohn's work did deal with war issues. Um, over there. Yeah, and his work is right here. And you still see Let's go talk the about locus it. over on. the... Uh, over lunar probes, and at the time in the 60s, he still had animal images, and the animal images that Don was dealing with in the 60s were often the paratroop dogs, the paracouches, as he called them, that were used in the bombing in Vietnam, and his work about space was still in there, his lunar probes was still very fascinating. Has left. But in here, where you see all this work in here, this is still reminiscent of his strong figurative work of the 60s. He was still very much tied to the German Expressionists. He was very much tied to some of the painters that had almost a very cartoon feel, like uh, uh, Peter Saul, Katai, or Kataj, okay, um, Hackney, and so forth. It still had that cartoon edge. These locusts that are still reminiscent of his of his war work. I mean, these these kind of ferocious insects dealing with these small forms that were threatening as they came through the sky. And I think that theme of dealing with the space, the energy, and then what was going on, 68, the, the lunar landing, the landing on the moon. Oh, yeah. All of it, that thread, that thread is still in his work. Because that's really what happens with all of us artists. I think we all carry a thread. Whether it's 40 years later, this is work that, of course, is more recent, Where is and that's he? why it's interesting. Where'd he go? Um, Don might be visiting as we gaze around the room. Uh, he would be talking to somebody here. It's such a, a great reception. Yeah. I, I mean, He's this... really thinned out like that. Well, that's why I brought my camera out, because I couldn't do it with no. all these yeah. people. people within two inches of your Yeah. yeah. Don was the captain of selling all the canvas. He was his personal oh, he really? assistant. He was the one who sold I all the linen that. canvas. He sold all the cotton canvas. He also assisted Bob in moving his paintings to the studios. And I was the one, a very sweet little girl in the 60s, who Bob used to ask me to babysit his children. So um, we knew Bob very well. But okay, if I put this on Facebook, right? All of this, you know, really this is, is historic. A total, yeah, it's a story. Because when you know a professor, you have so much, you know, respect for that professor. Bob would say, I wonder if I influenced you enough. I just spoke with him about it. I said, Bob has coined things. When we put down a color, we said, that's a Wilbert color. You put a 
certain horizontal line. We say, that's the Wilbert line. There are signatures that become Wilbur-esque. That's a Wilbert painting. That's a Wilbert influence. But Donald pointed out today to Bob that it's also when you're teaching. While you're teaching, you say, you remember the words that are still in your head, and you find they're coming out of your mouth 42 years later with a student because it was so meaningful. And you don't do a conscience. A conscience no, you that's a tribute. You don't think that that's much. That's a tribute to a, a great teacher's influence. Yeah, that it's part of you. It's just part of you. It's the, it creates the way you think and the way you create and the way you work your art problems out as you think out your art, as you think out when you're teaching somebody else. And that's why tonight we're talking to people who might be in their 30s, and their 40s, and their 50s, and their 60s, and... It's all today, here. It, that whole thread of history is here. Just like when you look at your artwork, as I pointed out, that thread of history is in your painting, that thread of history is in your life. And there's Don, I see, right here, talking right here to Gail Malley Mack. And he often is very camera shy, because he whips it all out in his paintings. I talk about it until he's in the classroom. I wanted and to do this for a talks. long time, Linda. Yeah, this is a... Um, Get you on camera. Yeah, and well, come on, let's you want to talk over to Don? Let's, come on, let's... Uh, Don, can we interrupt you? Um, we're doing an interview, and I just talked about your work. Can you say a few words about your piece? Linda has, but... What do you want me to say? <laughs> Whatever, what, you know... Well, talk about, about your relationship with Mr. Wilbur. Okay. Yeah, well, basically my work deals with the juxtaposition of both um, scientific kinds of things with some very primitive kinds of things. Sometimes I'm very influenced by May, by Mayan and, and some uh, uh, primitive Indians' work, well, come on, as, well, here and as well as some high-tech things. Like this here, the grid here, it's like the same kind of grid that you see in NASA in the photographs where they break it up into a grid and they, they assemble the pictures together. And that's what I'm thinking about when I do it again. These things here are just the magic of space probes. And I juxtapose this very scientific kind of world with the world that deals with the primitive world, the world of the animals and the simplicity of animal, the juxtaposition of something very, very, uh, very simple like, like locus, to something very complex like the space flow. And I kind of, I try to, to uh, find an interrelationship between some very scientific kinds of things and some very primitive kinds of things, both in terms of the animal world and in terms of primitive art. And that's what basically I've been working on for 15, 20 years of this concept. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thanks to both of you. Linda and Don Mendelson, two of the mainstays of the Metropolitan Detroit Art World. Wayne State. Wayne State. 68, 69. 68, 69. And we both, we both taught at Wayne. I taught there many years. Yes. Don is in his 42nd year in the community college. And influencing people just like Wilbert did. Right. Including one of your students was Bob Wilbert's granddaughter. No kidding. So Grandpa went out and had to buy supplies. So oh my goodness. Supplies. It never ends. The right. circle it never breaks. Right. It's like the Lion King, the circle of life. Yeah. Bye.